Archbishop Alexander Golitsyn is the Bishop of Dallas, the South, and the Bulgarian Diocese. Uh, he is also a graduate of Oxford University, where he wrote his monumental doctoral dissertation on St. Dionysius the Areopagite. Archbishop Alexander is a wonderful archpastor and he's, as you'll see, a uh, fine scholar. So without further ado, I hope you'll enjoy this episode from my interview with His Eminence Archbishop Alexander Golitsyn. <laughs> St. Simeon the New Theologian was an abbot, the abbot of a monastery uh, in Constantinople, not very important monastery, except while he was there, uh, called St. Mamas. At the turn of the 11th century, that is, right around the turn of the millennium, His life, which ran from about mid 10th century to around 1022, corresponded with the life, or certainly the reign, of the most powerful of the medieval emperors of Byzantium, Basil II who by his death in 1025 presided over a revived empire that stretched from Sicily to the Caspian Sea, from Croatia to Lebanon. It was the last moment of imperial glory. It was all downhill after that for several reasons, but that's another story. So he was, he lived then at a point when the old, when the ancient empire appeared to be revived, fully revived, carrying on an unbroken life from Caesar Augustus himself, and the most powerful state in the known world. So a period of huge confidence that turned out to be illusory, but a huge confidence. And in a church which was, again, appearing to go from strength to strength. The missions to the Slavs were bearing fruit in especially Bulgaria which was a much larger affair. Well, not during Basil's reign. He eliminated, the, for a time, the Bulgarian state. They would come back, as would uh, the Serbs. But the mission to Russia and the baptism of Prince Vladimir occurred during Simeon's lifetime. And the confidence in the church was reflected in a kind of official theology that said everything grand was accom is accomplished. We have nothing to do but to, as it were, repeat faithfully the teachings of our predecessors and certainly not to aspire to their magnificence. And Simeon, Simeon's whole life, certainly his work, was a protest against that, in direct contradiction. He said, no. What the Apostle Paul had, 
he, he, the apostle, thinks we should have too. The same experience, direct experience of God in Christ. And here's the, the really unique thing about him, almost unique. There are two other examples in all of patristic literature where we have the first person singular used about the experience of God. By and large, if you read um, the ancient uh, ascetics, even down to present day life, they don't say I. They don't say I saw God. And this follows the, what was taken to be the example of St. Paul who said, I knew a man who Simeon did. I saw God more than once. Um, and this was outrageous at the time. So his whole, all his oeuvre, his works, are on the, one, on the one hand advocating this insistence that the full possibilities of the vision of God are open to us now in this life and in fact are incumbent upon us as believers in Christ. And on the other hand, defense against his detractors. Now, of course, I'd heard about him in seminary, but then I had the experience of that remarkable figure, Madathus, uh, Emilianos of Simonopetra. So when I came to read later Simeon's works for myself, First, the one thing that was available, there were two things available in English. There, was the, there were the catechetical addresses that was put out by Paulus Press, translation. And um, uh, John McGuckin's uh, translation of St. Simeon's theological chapters, and uh, I think what called a theological treatise, something like that. But they were small. One was a fairly substantial book, the other quite small. But his major work, what he called, or what his biographer and editor, uh, his disciple Nikita Stithatos, called the Ethical Discourses, these had never been translated. So I started reading them. It's very odd. I was entranced and also. I was directly reminded on page after page of Father Emilianos, almost as if he were speaking. Since Simeon had a wonderfully direct way of writing. He, he was writing again in a period which was obsessed with, as I noted, the past, and hence its formal prose was usually a very unhappy attempt to imitate the high Attic style of the classical period. <coughs> and therefore, uh, almost always unendurably complicated and really pompous. Pompous and difficult to follow. And Simeon has none of that, none of it, none of it. He's speaking directly. Almost, almost, not quite, but almost street talk, street talk, street Greek. Almost the, the, the contemporary, the contemporary Greek. But there's no ego in it, as it were. Uh, no attempt to impress with fancy and archaic uh, Greek constructions. So I set off when I was, when I was given the um, post at Marquette. I thought, well, why not start with a translation? <coughs> and 
And here's something that really should be translated and, and should be published. Because it's of such enormous attractiveness and importance. So I did, and that grew into a, and a, that grew into an introduction to Simeon, which was also published with Saint Vladimir's edition of Ethical Discourses, and that was how I got to Simeon. Hi again, hope you enjoyed this episode from my interview with His Eminence Archbishop Alexander Golitsyn. Please leave a comment below letting me know what you thought of this video. And please subscribe below uh, so you can get notified the next time an episode becomes available, which happens every Friday. Have a wonderful weekend and we'll see you next week.